hasn't the sea plundered the Kaveri River called Pumbukar? After that, Nagaipatanam eventually attained the status of the main port of the Chola Kingdom. Many foreigners were eager to have trade relations with the Chola country, where the Pani River flowed and was rich in natural resources. Trade goods were arriving and disembarking in the huge forests. Pearls, beads, diamonds, and perfumes came aboard ships and Arab horses came ashore for sale. During the time of Sri Sundaram Murthy Nayanar, Nagaipatanam was a great Manimata city. On seeing that city Nambayarura, he described that. Sri Sundaram Murthy Nayanar asked Kayuragana Puruman who was feeding on the sea serpent, do you know what things he wanted? He asked for gold, bells, clothes, and ornaments like in other towns and he also asked for and received a high caste horse from Nagaipadinam. Pariyapurana says that he went back to Tiravarar after receiving them. After seeing the Arab horses arriving and disembarking at the port of Nagaipadinam, it seems that Nayanar also wanted to ride a horse. Apart from the legend about Nagaipatnam, historical inscriptions and tombstones have told about the city. The Anamangala Chepits describe the city as Nagaipatnam with its streets lined with many temples, inns, water bodies, oases, and manor houses. The same Anamangala copper plates tell about the famous Sudamani Viharam in Nagaipatanam and its history. The peninsula we refer to today as Malay Nadu was popularly known as Sri Vijaya Nadu at that time. An important city in that country is Gadaram. Sailendra dynasty was the ruler of the great Sri Vijaya Empire which spread in all four directions with that city as its capital. In that dynasty, a king named Maharathujan Sudaman Ivarman became very famous. Avarasan is an expert in royal tricks, in wisdom he is like Pragaspati, the guru, he is like the sun to the lotus flowers of the learned, he is a gift to the night. According to the records, Maravijaya Thunga Varman, the son of such an emperor, built Mount Meru and Yadtha Sudamani Viharam at Nagaipatanam in keeping with his father's name. Readers may ask that the king of Kadara, Maravijaya Tungan, came to Nagaipatnam and built a Buddhist temple. Sri Vijayanadu was one of the neighboring countries that had long-lasting trade relations with Chola Valanadu. Many citizens of that country came to Nagapatanam and settled permanently. Many others returned frequently. The king of Kadara and his subjects were Buddhists. Amanese built Sudamani Vihara at Nagaipatnam so that they could worship Buddha comfortably. He may have had in his mind the reason that the homeland of Buddhism is Bharata. The kings of Tamil Nadu have always believed in religious reconciliation, so they allowed the construction of Sudamani Viharam at Nagaipatnam. Is it just permission? From time to time the Buddha came to the temple, after the time of this story, Raja Raja Kolan donated Anamangalam village and many surrounding towns to Sudamani Vihara in Nagaipatnam completely, i.e. as a tax-free sacred land, this land donation was recorded and confirmed by the son of Raja Raja. Irayendra Chola, who is famous for history, in Cheeps. These are said to be Anamangalam Cheeps. A total of 21 scrolls, each 14 inches long and 5 inches wide, enclosed in a large copper ring. These scrolls were recently shipped across the ocean and placed on the promenade of the city of Leiden in the Netherlands in Europe. Hence, some historians refer to these scrolls as the Leiden Charter. The Chola kings from the time of Vijayalaya Chola were steeped in Shiva devotion. Adita Chola, Parantaka Chola, and Kandaratitha were vegetarians. They did many Shiva temple repairs. However, they did not hate other religions. Regardless of the religion of the subjects living in their kingdom, they maintained their neutrality and their religions. Sundara Chola emperor went a few steps ahead of his predecessors. He gave special privileges to Buddhist schools. Because of this, all the Buddhists living in the Chola Empire at that time were very excited. Aromas Hivarma arranged for the restoration of dilapidated Buddhist viharas in Ceylon which further increased their enthusiasm. If not, then what is the reason for the chaos that has happened in the Sudamani Viharam, which has the name today? Why are the Bhikkhus running around restlessly? What is all the noise and clamor at the gate of Sudamani Viharam? Well, let's follow Chandan Amudan and see.
we were told that Sendan Amuthan and the other two had steered the boat through the canal and reached the interior of Sudamani Viharam. Seeing no one there, Sendan Amuthan went to the door of the Vihara, searching for a way. There was a temple called Chitim of Lord Buddha where the public could come and worship. Many devotees had come that morning carrying trays full of lotus flowers, Seneca flowers, and other puja items. But they seemed to have forgotten what had come. Buddhist bhikkhus were standing on the steps leading up to the Chitim. Santhana Muthan saw someone standing down towards them saying something. He also saw some of the bhikkhus standing with tears in their eyes. Many of the devotees standing below chanted Sadhu. Sadhu. After getting closer and listening for a while, I realized what it was. The one who was talking to the bhikkhus was one of the sailors in Parthapendra's ship. The ship reached Nagapatanam on the first night. As soon as the sailors came ashore, the news spread throughout the city to tell some people that the prince had been taken away by the sea. Early in the morning one of the Amalumi was brought by the chief Pikshu of Sudamani Vihara to find out if the news was true. He said as he knew what he knew, the prince who jumped into the sea when the whirlwind hit never came back, he said in a sad voice. At that time there were many crying voices in the meeting. Tears flowed from the great Piksha's eyes in torrents. He climbed the steps with bowed head and entered the Viharat past the Chitya. Other Pikhas also followed him. No one noticed that Sendan Amudan also came with them. Pratama Piksha looked at the others and said was the Lord Buddha's mercy like this? Was he building many mental forts? Look, I had recently gone to Tanjavur to see the Emperor. At that time I told about the miraculous deeds of Aromas Hivarma in Sri Lanka. The younger Prati Kundave Devi was also listening to all this. Then he called me alone and brought me to this Vihara in the Adura Shela. He also said that he would provide the necessary conditions for it to be established. Is that all? Acharya. You have heard that there are various talks going on in the country. Perhaps Prince Sudamani will be a guest at the Viharam for a few days. Can you keep him and protect him? asked Kundave Prati. Goddess. If we get such a boon, we will protect our eyes like eyelids. I said that. What use? Prince drowned in the sea? All the morals of the good people in this country are full. The Chola Empire was complete. How dare Samadra Rajan do such a bigotry? Will he listen to that villain? All the other Bhikkhus wept silently. After the chief Piksha stopped speaking, there was silence for a while. Sendan Amuthan tried to approach the Acharya by entering among the Buddhist Pikhas saying that it was the time. Immediately many people stopped him. Who is this man? How did he get here? They asked each other. My name is Sendan Amuthan sir. I am from Tanjore. I have something to say to your leader. He said. Say, say. Many said. Seeing his reluctance, the Acharya said, There is nothing secret that these people should not know, tell it. Sir. I have brought a patient. Who is that patient? What disease? Where have you left? I left it in the middle of the Viharam. How did you get there? Across the canal, I brought the patient to the boat. Shivering cold you at once. Bhagavan. Shivering is an infectious disease. Why did you bring that patient here? Especially when it's a good time. Acharya. I used to think Emperor Ashoka was a Buddhist. Now it seems not. Why do you say that? I saw an Ashoka pillar near Kanchi that says treating the sick is the first dharma. You're such a jerk. Said Amuthan. Acharya Pikshul looked at the others and said, Wait a little. I will go and see and tell you, and then, come. Father, took Amudan and led him away. Pikshu was startled to see a young man and a young woman near the canal in the central courtyard of the Viharam. What dare you do? Women are not allowed to enter this monastery. Isn't there a separate monastery built even for Pikhunis? Suffice it to say that Pikshu was stunned when he got closer and saw who the young man was. He was speechless for a while because of his amazement and excitement. For doubt, is Prince Aromas Hivarmar? Sinthan asked Amudan. 
This fell on the ear of the prince. No, not the Acharya. I am a prince and nothing. This woman and this child are trying to beat me crazy. I am a runner. I looked at this woman a while ago and said, Woman. Will you marry me? Let us both get on a boat and go to foreign lands. She was mad about something. I the one who ruled the world under the shadow of an umbrella. She, a poor netizen, will not marry me. It is enough for her if I am healthy. She is going to enjoy hearing about my great successes in the future. How is the story? Am I really paranoid? Is she? Santhanamuthanacharya said something to Bhikshu. Even before that, Bhikshu had realized that the prince was speaking in a state of unconsciousness due to his excitement. When Kundeva Devi had asked her to shelter the prince, he remembered. Looking at the other Bhikkhus, he said, This boy has got poisonous sura. If he is sent outside, it will infect thousands more. Thousands of people in Sri Lanka have died from sura. Therefore, I will take this young man to my room and do the work myself. In the meantime, if he loses something due to the speed of sura, don't mind it. Said. Immediately the chief Bhikshu came close to the prince and lifted him into a hug with one hand. Sendan Amuthan on the other hand held the prince and helped him. Everyone went up the stairs. Look, in a few seconds they'll be all the way up the stairs. They open the door and enter. Then the door becomes possible. It is only possible with Sat. Then he cannot be seen. Pungujali went as expected. As he climbed the stairs, the door opened. The chief Piksha said something, leaving only Sendan Amudan outside. Then everyone entered through the open door. The door slammed shut. It seemed to close the door to the heart of the flower. It is not certain that he will see the prince in this birth. Will he get such a blessing in the next birth? Pungazali stood watching the prince disappear while thinking like this.